and being here. Uh, I'm going to give you just a really quick background um, on the business and a little bit of myself um, too. So we've been in business now for 11 years. And like Ashley said, we've run multiple funds. Um, we're going to talk about our buy and hold fund tonight is what we're going to do. And um, do we have a, a picture still, Ashley, of the family? Do we still have that? Can you throw that up there? Because I can't sure. like tell everybody about it. I like to brag about my family, okay? So I, this is my webinar. I get to do whatever I want, right? Right, Ashley? Tell them yes. All right, good. Well, so I just want to give you a quick background for me. Um, this is a great picture of the family here. I've got four kids. I've got three boys, and uh, my oldest is a girl, uh, my daughter. And actually, I get in trouble with my wife whenever I say my daughter or my kids. She says, there are kids. And I said, yes, they are. So, so um, it's just when she's not in the room here with me, it goes along with that way, that way. But my oldest son, Hayden, the one there in the red shirt is in the Air Force and he's stationed in Japan. And last year when we could still travel, we actually all went to Japan together and um, visited him and his wife, Taylor, who's in front of him there. And then my daughter, or our daughter, uh, Kayla is kind of in the middle there. My uh, son, Tate, is a far left there on the uh, with the sunglasses Dexter's in the middle next to to um, it is my wife um, Tanya and then me and uh, Will is on the end there and that is Kayla's boyfriend so so um, that's a little bit about me and the family um, a little bit about the, um, the business itself and that sort of stuff so why don't we just jump into this we're going to go through this for a few minutes like Ashley said uh, I'm going to give you a real quick background of what we do here, and then we'll take some questions, and um, I, I think we'll be able to get everything answered as early as, as much as we can tonight um, with this. So this gives you a preliminary side of the deal. So, so for the last three years, uh, about really three and a half years now, we've been buying properties in the Midwest. Um, so we're based here in Reno, Nevada, which kind of sounds strange that we're buying properties in the Midwest. But there's a reason for that. We buy affordable homes. Most of them range about in the average of about eighty-five thousand to maybe a hundred thousand dollars, and we buy them because they don't fluctuate up and down in value a whole lot. So timing's not super important, um, and but they give us a really good yield. So we're looking for cash flow. We're not looking for buying these homes and making a big killing on some type of appreciation if we got lucky, because that's just about all you can do with appreciation. We're looking for the stable deal that says, okay, we can get cash flow on these on a very regular basis, and that's what we do. So we built this portfolio of homes in the Midwest, which includes five different cities, which are Akron, Toledo, and Cleveland. Those are all in Ohio. And then we have St. Louis and also Birmingham. So we've got five cities and three states that we buy in um, as of right now. And we built this portfolio up to over, well, I just got my report today, we're at 813 homes to be exact. Um, and, we're, and we're adding about 40 to 50 homes per month um, to this. Um, so what we're doing is we're, as we buy back there, not only are we looking for the cash flow with these properties, but we're also looking to have a really big safety net. And that safety net comes into play with a few different parts of it. So one big, big part is we're very, very diversified, right? We're in five different cities, three different states, multiple, multiple different types of neighborhoods within those cities themselves with all of that. But the other big, big safety net is because we buy only in what we call the core rental market or the affordable side of the homes, is it gives us a really good solid base because as the old saying goes, people always need a place to live. And so we've basically built this entire thing for things of a downturn in the economy. And if things go horribly wrong in the economy, in which we're kind of dealing with some of that right now, um, is that we, we want to be in a very safe place. In other words, these are the affordable homes. When things go bad, People don't upsize, they downsize. And so it helps us to keep these homes full and have high occupancy rates um, because of that. And that's kind of the main, main reason that we like to be there. So 
sometimes I say we're the tortoise, you know, out of the tortoise and the hare. We don't have this gigantic return, although there's pretty good return you can get if you want to finance the homes. I'll, I'll talk to you about that tonight. But it's kind of plodding along, making sure we're always safe and we're going to always get there and, and make it towards the end. And it's not going to ever become a, a big problem for us. Um, I really like to sleep at night. My partners in the business like to sleep at night. And uh, I know most of our investors like that same deal. You know, there's just not a lot of risk that are involved with this. Now, the way that we choose these cities and where we're going to buy is kind of based on a calculation, a mathematical calculation of looking at what's the demand there and then what can, what's the kind of cash flow that we can expect to get out of those properties there. The other thing that we've found to be um, really almost the difference between success and failure is that we have to have our own people on the ground. So as of today, we've reached about 65 employees that are on our team with about probably about 40, 45 of them or so being here in Reno, Nevada, and the rest all being in the Midwest. Um, and so what does that mean? Well, that means that in every single one of those cities, we will not buy homes or be there and participate unless we have our own real estate brokerage, our own property manager, and our own construction manager. Because we felt, we've, we've found that that is what makes or breaks what really happens out there. If you've owned rental properties before, um, for any of you that have joined us tonight, I mean, I think you can probably relate if you're having to deal with a third party property manager, and I'm not trying to throw them under the bus, but it is true, uh, it's really, really difficult. And then add 1,500 miles in between us and them, and it becomes even that much harder. So that's why what we've found, once we hit some economies of scale, which was about around the 300 mark, we started putting our own people on the ground and we'll continue to build this up into the thousands of homes making it even that much more sustainable. So that gives you kind of an idea of what we're doing and we think very, very long-term. In other words, we're buying these homes and we're gonna hold on to them and we're thinking 20, 30, 40 years ahead. Um, there is no intention to buy these and then flip it and make something, um, you know, make dollars on that. That's not, we have no interest in doing that sort of, of deal. So let's talk about a few ways that everybody can participate within um, what we're talking about here. So we'll start with the fund. So we have a buy and hold fund, um, which means people come into the fund, which is an LLC. Um, you become a member of the LLC and whatever amount of money you put into the fund, you own a pro rata share of the whole deal. So as of today, the fund has about $25 million worth of properties that are part of that. Your return's gonna be around the eight and a half percent mark. And then when you add some depreciation in there because you get the depreciation, you get a pro rata amount of your depreciation um, on the, uh, within the fund, you're gonna get that eight and a half percent up to about nine and a half, ten percent 10% or so when you take in total consideration. That's one of the beautiful things about real estate is you get the tax benefits. And so instead of paying taxes at the end of the year, on all the income you made, you get to defer a, a, a big portion of that. So that, that's a big, big benefit that comes along with that. The second way that you can participate, and this is the one where if you want to come in and you want to actually finance some properties, we can do this. Now, let me, let me explain how we go about doing this. Everything we do, we try to make it a passive investment for our investors. We're not looking for people that want to be real active and buy turnkey homes and then manage them themselves or do any of that sort of stuff. We want to make it very, very easy for people um, to participate with us. So if you come into that, we, what we would do is what we call a secured portfolio. So we would actually sell you properties out of the fund and then your name would actually be titled on the properties. And if you're going to go this direction, what we would suggest that you do is that you actually finance the properties because today it is an amazing deal that you can get 4% interest rates on these, these um, loans. They're beautiful Fannie Mae 30 year loans. It just doesn't get any better than this. Now you can get 10 
loans in your name. And if you're married and have a spouse and that spouse qualifies, then you can get an, another 10 in, that, in your spouse's name as well. So you could get theoretically up to 20 of these, these, these loans. But the way we do it is we're going to sell you a home out of the fund. And then we're going to lease that home back from you. And we're going to turn around and pay you a set monthly income. Now, once we do that, we're going to take back over those, those properties and we're going to put them back into the portfolio of over 800 properties. And we're going to manage them and we're going to take over all the costs, responsibilities, and performance issues with those properties. So as an example, let's say that one of your properties goes vacant. That doesn't affect you at all because to us, it's just one of the 800 properties that we own you're still gonna get paid your set monthly income. If we have a hot water heater that breaks, we're gonna go out and fix it and pay for it and still pay you your set monthly income on that. So it doesn't matter what happens with the property, it doesn't affect what's happening to you as an individual. Now, what you're getting paid on is the entire portfolio. And that's again, where you're getting all that safety and diversification um, through that. So the only expense that you have in there is the owner's insurance. That's the only expense that you'll end up having that comes out of your pocket. And even with that, we'll help you to get put together on our bulk policy. We'll do the, all this for you. And then we'll even pay it for you. But it is an expense out of your pocket. But that is it. There are no surprises. There are no fine print that come after this. And oh, by the way, you know, you have to pay for this. There's nothing like that that happens from that. Now, you do have your um, mortgage payments, which we can set up just on an auto pay um, with that, but they're all included in what I'm going to tell you is what kind of return you can expect. So we talked about the fund. The fund returns about 8.5% plus the depreciation. You can double that if you come in and you do the secured portfolio and you do the financing with that. So you're going to get somewhere up in the, we call it the 12 to 16% range. Um, it really actually ends up being, if you get the full gist of everything, you're going to be in the 17% range. So, um, but we always like to say things a little bit more conservative because we don't know where everybody will be with their, their deals um, because it depends on your tax benefits and all of that sort of stuff. So that's a great way to come in and invest, great way to make bigger dollars, a little bit of pain in the rear to go through the financing. But once you're done, you have those 30-year loans and you can do whatever you want with them um, with that deal. In the end, we make a very easy, we'll buy the properties back from you and um, make it so that you don't have to even go out and sell them. So if you, you want to sell one or two back to us or whatever to get your money out, that's an easy way to do it. We ask for a 90-day notice and it's the same thing within the fund if you want to get dollars out. Now, I know a few of you have come in tonight about 1031 exchanges. So let's talk about how that works. Um, this is really a nice way to, 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 to do real estate. I, here's what we find with so many people is they've kind of been there, done that, right? They own a property. They've owned it for many, many years. They've got lots of equity built up into it. They're tired of it. They don't want to manage it anymore, whatever they want to do, but they sure don't want to pay the taxes. None of us want to pay the tax. I've not met people who want to so uh, introduce me if you do find that, that person. Um, so what happens is you can do a 1031 exchange with this with exactly the same way that we talked about with the secured portfolio. You would actually come in, we would sell you properties outside or inside from the fund. That would be titled in your name. That would meet the 1031 requirements. If you wanted to, you don't have to do financing. You can just come in and do a, um, all cash or whatever you've got type of deal with the 1031. If you have existing debt, we can help you with that as well um, to take care of that. Um, but if you did want to do financing, it works exactly the same way. So if you want to increase your return, you can do that. If you don't do financing, you're going to have in that respect, you're going to be somewhere around the 7 to 8% return um, with that. But everything's going to work the same way. We're going to sell you the property, lease it back. We take all the responsibilities and we pay you a set monthly income. And the beautiful thing with that is, again, you're part of the whole portfolio. So 
it no longer means, oh gosh, I have 10 houses and what happens if one of them goes bad or this happens or that happens. You're never going to have to worry about that because all of that is taken care of. So that's the way that the 1031 um, works. It works the same way as any of those others. Now, in the parts that we manage in the 800 plus homes, um, we, as I said earlier, we have about $25 million of assets inside of the fund. We have another about 20 or $25 million or so in people that have 1031s or just have done financing. And, but all those people have their names on the title of the property. So in all, we're at about 45 to 50 million or so in assets under management. And we just keep growing that about somewhere between about three to $5 million a month. It's really picked up and it's really um, moving right along. And um, we're probably even getting a few little bit better buys even right now, everything that's going on. It is, it is absolutely not slowed down or continue to have some really good uh, rent collections as an overall sense and everything staying strong from that per, per, uh, perspective. Um, we did see rents, I'll just uh, address that because we might get the question tonight, right? Um, is, you know, what have we seen? We've seen about 5% less collections in rents. Now, what that means is we're not collecting it right now, but we will collect it over a period of time. So we're working with those tenants that have some problems. Um, and as long as they can work with us, we'll do that. We'll collect most of that rent that we haven't collected. It just will take a little bit longer. Uh, in the overall scheme of everything. Out of 813, I got to think about this because I just got this report. I think this is kind of amazing. I've got to add it up, six, two, and one. So only nine. We only have nine people out of 813 homes as of today that are in the eviction process. So again, that kind of shows um, how hard we work and making sure we have the right tenants that are in there. And no matter what you do, you're always going to have some that, that uh, will have come um, you know, to you and, and, and just don't work out. Or maybe something really did change in their life and they're just no longer able to fall, uh, pay the rent. So, all right, I think Ashley, that is, um, actually I probably spoke longer than I, I, I needed to there. Um, but I know we probably have a few questions and why don't we jump into those and uh, see what we can do. Sure. So, and just for anyone who's uh, listening, if you'd like to submit any more questions, you can do so by using the Q&A tool at the bottom of the screen. If it's on mobile, I think you have to like click on the bottom bar for that to show up, um, but you can submit your questions if you like. Um, but we do have a couple, one of which is, what is the minimum investment? So if you're coming into the fund, it's $25,000. If you're going to buy a home, you have to have at least enough to buy the home, right? Um, if you're going to buy one home and they're averaging 85 to 100,000, you could uh, theoretically um, finance that. So um, it's about one to every, for every dollar you put, let's just call it a $100,000 home, you're going to need about $35,000 or so as a down payment to buy a $100,000 home um, on that too. Okay. All right, I have another question here for you. What is the ratio of the master lease to the tenant lease? I don't, I, I think I know what that question means. I don't know that answer. Um, it, it, it isn't based on, you've got, you have a certain rent dollar that's coming in on the home, right? And I think that's what this person is asking. Um, and, and then we're turning around and paying you a set monthly income. Well, that set monthly income is basically net profit. So that set monthly income is less all the expenses that we have. So property taxes, sewer, you know, maintenance, repairs, property management, everything like that. So I don't really know what that, that ratio is because um, I've never really looked at it from that, that perspective. So sorry, I don't, I don't know how to I don't know how to answer that better. Sure, and if um, for the person who asked that question, if you have any follow up questions, feel free to put it in the Q and A yeah. box, and we'll make sure to address it. Yeah. Um, and we do actually have another oops, here. Sorry, I clicked on the wrong button. Um, does the fund have debt? I feel like you kind of talked about that a little bit, but can you expand on that? 
Yeah, actually, I don't know that we did really say, I said that earlier. So out of the 25 million or so, we have about 6 million in debt. And that 6 million in debt uh, breaks down pretty easily. It's about 3 million we have from an institutional lender. And we have another 3 million that people came in as lenders. So we, we and I didn't talk about that because it, I don't know why. I just, it's just not part of the, the thing I said. But if you wanted to be a lender, you could be a lender to the fund. You get paid six and a half percent interest. Your, your advantage is, is that as a lender, you get the priority position over the equity investors. Um, and so you're very well backed up by a whole lot of assets if you figure that six million is in debt and 25 million in assets total. So um, yes, and, and the fund will never be a really high leverage type of a fund um, overall. It, it's just not, we're, we're gonna always stay pretty con, um, conservative with that. I mean, I could see it maybe some point, someday, it may be if things you know, kind of all lined up, stars and everything, we could be at maybe a 50% LTV, but I, I would guess that that's the, the highest we'd ever really, really go. Um, and someone asked, can you elaborate on help with existing 1031 debt and what that means? Yeah, so let's say that you sold your piece of property and let's say that it was a um, million dollars. Let's use it that easy figure and you owed $200,000 on it. Um, so you have this debt. When you do a 1031, if you sell your property for a million dollars, you have to buy another property or properties for a million dollars or more. Otherwise, you're going to pay the taxes. It doesn't, they don't care about your equity. They don't care about your debt. They care about the total value of what you sold the property for. If you wanted to come in and do $800,000 worth of equity with us, but you've got to get a million dollars worth of homes, we would sell you a million dollars worth of homes, but we would only pay you on that $800,000 worth of equity. So we take care of that internal where we, we, we satisfy your 1031 um, exchange and everything works out great. Um, however, if you wanted to, you could also come in and get outside financing. Now, with that outside financing, instead of making the 7 8%, what I just got done explaining there, you would end up making much better than that. So depending on how much you actually financed it for. Sometimes we end up even breaking those apart. You'll do some part of it is through financing, some outside financing. The rest is buying some properties all cash um, with that. But either way, we have either a really simple way. We just take care of it. You don't have to worry about going and getting more financing. Um, and we solve that for you. Or you can go get some out financing, outside financing. We'll help you to do all that. Um, and, and that will kind of solve that problem. Ashley, I want to just say one more thing too. Sure. I, I know this comes up and I, I didn't address it. it. You'll notice in all of our marketing, we'll talk about doubling your income in a 1031. And, and the reason for that is, is that people end up having what we call trapped equity inside of their properties. And all that means is that you built up, you paid down, you might have bought the property with a loan on it, and then you paid it down over all this period of time. And we have lots of people that come to us with you know, a free and clear property. And it's just not producing what it normally could produce because it has no leverage on it. And real estate's kind of made to be leveraged. Um, and so what happens is, if let's just say you, you, have, you owned your property and you owned it free and clear. And if you really figure out what your net profit was after all your expenses and everything else, because you gotta do all that, and you come and you put that in and you start making it without any financing, you start making the seven, eight percent on your money, almost every single time we double or do better than that with every person that comes through the door. And, and think about that, not only do we do that, but we get completely rid of all your landlord hassles, right? So all that stuff goes away. And you know, uh, we, we say this even in some of our, like, you know, advertising stuff, like it seems like it's too good to be true, but this is what we do every single day. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it, it happens all the time. And I mean, we see sometimes people get four or five, you know, greater percentage um, on their money. It all depends on where they are. But it's pretty rare that we don't do at least double or better um, for somebody with their property. 
Okay, we have one more question here that I think we can answer in the time that we have left. And this might be a question that is better suited for a follow-up call, but I figured I'd ask it anyway. Sure. Um, so the person asks, if we sell a home for $225,000 with no mortgage on this home, when we do a 1031 exchange, do we need to buy a home more than that amount? Or can we buy two or three that is more than that amount? Yeah, you're gonna buy two or three. Yeah, so um, let, you know, on a $225,000 home, we're gonna probably end up selling you about three properties. And, and you'll never hit your 225 just perfectly. So you're gonna to have to go a little bit over, a little bit under. If you go a little bit under, you're gonna pay some taxes. If you go a little bit over, you gotta bring in a little bit more money um, to make the whole deal work. But we have so many properties within our inventory. We, we get pretty darn close on hitting those numbers, but that's the way that that would work. You just got to make sure you hit the 225 uh, mark plus a little bit and, and you're in good shape. So that would be three homes with us most likely. Okay, we are just about at our time for today and it looks like some of the other questions might be better suited for follow-up conversations with Greg okay. and our team. Um, so Greg, do you have any final thoughts before we share information about how people can get in touch with us? Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's, that's the easiest way to do it. Just get in touch with us. And, um, you know, we're happy to do a, a Zoom call like we're doing here. Uh, we'll meet in person. If you want to meet in person, we can do that. That's great. Uh, I really miss meeting in person right now. We've got a few people coming back in, which is really nice. Um, you know, or just do a phone call, whatever, whatever you, you prefer. But uh, be happy to go through that. We can also set up a deal where, it, depending on what you're looking at, we can get you projected net returns. We can show you the numbers, all that sort of stuff. It makes it very easy um, to, to understand and, and to get through it all. So yeah, thank you very much, everybody, for coming tonight. I know Ashley will take you through the rest of this. And, and uh, thanks. Good night. Thanks, Greg. Um, in a second here, my colleague Caitlin is going to show you a screen of how you can get in touch with our team, including um, our email address and phone number. And you can also submit your contact information to us right now through the Q&A tool. Um, again, that just goes to me and I just collect it so that we can follow up with you. And if you have any more questions, that's the best way to get answers. Uh, so we look forward to hearing from you and uh, thanks for joining us tonight. Have a good rest of your day.